starting Facebook tutorial, and I'm going to be showing you how to make more friends and uh, how to deal with everyone in Facebook and how you have better luck in the real world. Sounds not entirely true, but if we can be friends, and I do, I think that's a great idea. Our more important, we can like, like each other's photos and shit, and we can like share our experiences in the amusement. So let's jump into this little doll, and we're going to be talking about how I got from let's say this shot to this. So it's the same shot I would do, but what I've done is enhanced certain features of this young man's face, and uh, also played with things like contrast and color, and uh, the results, dare I say, are magnificent. <laughs> so how did I get to this place, and uh, what were the thought processes along the way? Now I'm not going to show you how to use the digital doll um, uh, as a software guide. I'm, you can look that up on YouTube. There's hundreds of tutorials that teach you how to import these drives, how to manage your footage, um, how to conform the footage to a timeline, but basically I want to talk about the color and the aspect. So let's jump straight ahead into that. Now here's the finished product, the end result was something like this. Now this one looks like a very complicated, now this may seem like a very complex array, but when you break it down it's actually quite simple. Basically all we're doing is we're saying, first step, let's balance the nose. Second step, let's have a look at different aspects of the image that we want to recapture. Uh, third step, let's have a look at the focus of the image and where we want our um, viewer to look. How do we enhance that? And then we have a primal contrast node and then just a primal minor adjustment node. But I'm going to go through all of this stuff right the fuck right now. So let's have a look at the original shot right here. Now it was shot on red. I shot this with my red Scarlet X. Actually the very first film that I shot was my red Scarlet X. And um, if we have a look at the quick properties here, you can see that we, uh, by default, the way I shot this was, uh, with red color three times, and then again a third of red color three. Now what the hell do these things mean? Well, the color space is referring to red's interpretation of the color on the sensor. So when you press record, you're going to be recording or decoding the raw data, anything with a specified color range, which Graham and Red have created in the film. Now this is their best and most latest color science, which is red color three. Now remember, these are starting points for our array. The next thing is the gamma curve. Now it's very important to understand what a gamma curve is, and it's important to understand what and how to be able to adjust that. So in shooting raw, you have the ability to change the gamma curve. Basically, a gamma curve is designed to make the image look good flat as a rock. The gamma curve is the contrasting raw data, contrast, saturation to give the image a much more reasonable balance. But to quickly grade this image, I want to be in charge of that gamma curve. I want to be the one who sets that look. So it's ideal to actually shoot and record in a gamma curve that's much, much flatter than that. Because what this is doing is actually already crossing our sensor, giving us quite a flat looking image, which then goes through the decode and decortion step. And I change my gamma curve to red light film. Look how much flatter it looks again. It's going to actually look terrible, isn't it? But the beauty is it's giving us more control because we are the masters of this color. We, we want to start from the very beginning and go to what the gamma can do um, virtually anything in terms of the aesthetics of the image, other than give us a much enhanced effect. So that's why people talk about shooting flat, and um, that's exactly what we've just done here. Thanks to the ability of RAW, we have shoot our gamma curve to red light film. Now, I do suggest using red color three. So here we have a good starting point. But let's, what do we do creatively to kind of make this shot really, really sing? Because it is heavy. It's got to be a fast and tight shot. So the first thing we do is we look at the contrast of the image. Is there a black point in this image? I don't think there is. It looks very washed out to me. There's no pure black in here. Now you might think under this little collar here, or maybe that black fluff there is pure black. But hold on a second. Let's compare it to this black here. That's pure black. So we actually have no pure black. Now I'm just using these as a guide here, but what if we need to scientifically prove that we have no pure black? So let's right click on our image and go to research red. Now what we're gonna do for the most of this um, tutorial is just using the ray scan method. So what I'm gonna do is go to this top left hand scope and click on this big plus button, that's a ray scan. And now if I click on this one up, let's go up and let's click on this plus here. So this can enlarge that image even more now, we're talking about creating a flat point, and if you look at the information that lies on this doll, zero representing pure black, and 10.3 representing pure rock, we can see that most of our image 
alive and independent. There is no fear of God. There is no fear in love. The fear is stand out from the crowd. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask you to jump out of your leaves where you live and then pray with us. And we have three great colors to select from. We have the color red. For us up in the three sections, no surprise there. Each section in each county game represents um, basically it's just put it in layman's terms. Red represents your shadow. County six represents your mission. And game represents your heart. So it's the shadow and the heart. Now each year we play with the color of each portion of the game. So the color is the shadow. The color is the mission. And the color is the heart. But we also have this little slide in there that uh, moves those values as needed. Now what we want to do first is grab our list and line up all the options and drop all of our names into the middle. So now you can see right here we actually have fewer players. And my guess is that this portion we need to be used with as a guide for our um, visual representation. If we overlay this graph onto this image, it actually represents everything in two in choice. In other words, if we jump across uh, this mark from left to right and jump across this mark from left to right, you can see that there is a fewer black points right here. But if we do overlay that on the edge, we see it's a bit more balanced. But you understand what I'm saying, right? So now we have three other black points, but the only fewer black points we've got at this stage is this portion of the game for our player, right? And maybe a little bit over here on this portion of the game. But before we jump ahead and just agree that that's fewer blacks, there's one more that I need to mention that are cast in the shadow. Now, when we look at the way through Mind Body, you can see that there are these various colors, red, green, and blue, but there's also variations in color like purple, pink, or white. Now, what does this mean? Well, it means that when these colors of light overlap each other, if they overlap at all in snap to equal proportions, the light actually turns white, which means this is a pure white or a gray, neutral light through and through. So when all red and green do the same snap, they turn white. This is really important to understand because when you look at the shadow, you'll notice that there are tinged blue and green, and the red is in that final color. So when we're balancing an image, of course we want to create contrast, but we also want to keep note of the color cast that might be on these shadows. So how do we adjust that? Well, let's jump straight to our color wheel this time, and this is going to link just what happens to those shadowy colors. What we want to really do is we want to link one of the blank points in the shadow to the one point in the white. So let's find our own color. And let's get in and mark it in our balance wheel. So now these shoulder straps are actually black. They're not just half black because the red's running away now. But they're actually fewer black. But not all portions of our shadow are blue, so that's fine. So you can see over here that this portion of our shadow is in red and the next one is in white. So once you understand that, you're up to the task of adjusting. The next thing we want to do is add our highlights. Now if you look at these highlights, you can see that there's these green and white highlights, but once again, we want to correct for that. So what I'm going to do is slide our highlight again further away. And once again, we want our highlight to be in the white color. So that's looking better. Now we have almost a pure white. Let's put a little bit of yellow in there. That's fine. Just some of it. And this is actually um, referring to the edge of the game. This is referring to the dark edge of the game. So what we've done now is we've balanced our shadow and we've done our highlights. But we still need to increase the brightness of our highlights because if we look at 10.3, which represents pure white, we have no pure white in that image. So let's just quickly have a look at the image and ask yourself, should it have a pure white? Um, portion of the image, and indeed it should. I mean, look at this highlight in the back left corner here. That is the sky, and it's completely blown out. So yes, that should be pure white uh, in terms of the first mode and the last mode of the image. So we've done that. We need to do now is just um, line it up. And as we've brought it up, we've actually increased um, our colors in red. So we need to balance that out a little bit. And So now we have a balanced image, roughly. So now that we've created a black and a white here and added contrast to this scene, I want you to look at the image and think about the size of the scene. Now look at the overall color cast of the image. To me, it looks a little bit pink and a little bit green. So maybe you're going to regret that image. You need to think in octaves. So what is the octopus color of the screen? And if you don't know that, it's pretty easy to figure out. All you do is look at these color wheels and look at 180 degrees 
imagine you draw a line. So here's the green. And if you look 180 degrees across from there, the opposite color is the pink. And this, because we want to cancel out green, all we do is push the red down. And then that's a very sensitive um, adjustment. So remember, color correction is all about targeting and being very mindful of your line choice. So what I've done there is gone to my gamma mesh and then come back and click the red dot. So I've basically drawn a color correction. Now what I can do is I've got a balance between my green and my white color and I can click on that little menu. So let's compare that to the pink and gray. There's still a way to play around with this. You can zoom in to where you're pale. The background is looking almost black and white. The contrast could be increased. The darkness could be increased. The eyeballs and the color of his eyes could be enhanced. All of these things are going to add into the effect. So now we want to create a moving effect. How do we do that? As long as you double click on this node and press Alt or F to play it in, or um, to enter, then you have node number two here. And now we can start grading the eyes without affecting the eyes in the same way as the nose. So keep in mind that these are different. So every time you add a node into the game, you're adding these corrections to get to the final result, which is what we did. So we'll go into that a little bit more detail in a second, or even make them two separate nodes, whatever. But the second node, we want to make a correction. I want to start modifying um, specific portions of the image. So in our first node, we kind of did that using uh, this three-way color wheel thing where we selected shadows, midtones, and highlights. But now we're going to go even more selective. We're going to use a method called qualify. So if we go over here to the second tool and click on qualify, we have this little magic wand tool that we can use to open Photoshop. And what we could do, for example, if I wanted to select this guy's skin, I could just click on the skin and it would give me the effect. But I want to teach you the ins and outs of this qualifier because um, it really pays down the track when you're making more difficult choices. So let's turn off that magic wand tool for a second and have a look at the image and ask yourself three questions. What color is this guy's skin? How saturated is the skin? And how bright is the dark? So whenever you're trying to select an image, you need to ask yourself all three questions. And let's have a look at the image right now. So at the moment, the qualifier has not been set up to specify any range. So that's in the whole range. So what we want to do is have a look at the skin and ask ourselves, is it green or is it a gray? Well, let's have a look at this very, very deep saturation. It's almost gray, but it definitely has a pinky yellow color to it. So what we're going to do is go to the width and just cancel in that width just to the color zone between the pink and the skin line. Now, we can play with the width. We can then go to the center and slide that down as well. You'll notice as you slide it around, this color in the middle um, arrows in the color cancels. This gives you an indication of what color is in that skin. So if we just move it around, we'll still sort of start to look like the color of the skin, which I would say is about there. Roughly this dark, at least with the final value. The next thing we want to do is say to uh, the qualifier, how saturated is that color? So if we look at the color of the skin, it's mostly very, very desaturated, isn't it? So if we go to the high point, we can move that down one step, and we don't want to select anything in this little space here at the bottom. We can bring that right down and click it. The saturation's almost black and white with the skin, but it does have some color to it. So that's looking pretty good. The next thing we want to look at is the brightness of the skin. So how bright is it? Is it in these shadow areas? Is it in these highlight areas? I want to suggest that it's sort of around this area here. So if we just grab that low point and drag it down to here, and then grab this high point and drag it down to there. Let's see how close we've got. So if we zoom on the highlight area by pressing this magic wand, we can see, bam, I've done a pretty good job of actually selecting that skin. Now, it still needs to point in, but we actually haven't softened any of the edges of these selections. And we did that all um, just by asking those three logical questions. Very, very powerful once we have an idea of where our effect that we're clicking on the magic wand is going to end up being. So we've got to a pretty good place, but notice we're also selecting these darker areas of the room. So what we can do is go to our low part of the um, room and bring that up. And the higher we go, the less of that darkness that we select. And that's looking pretty good too. So now we have a rough, rough selection, which is looking pretty good. Do you notice the edges of my selection are quite dark? There's no softness at all. So what we can do is start to introduce different colors to our interaction. So I can change the width of my color band because I know I don't want to select anything green, but you can see here that my selection is actually including some green. So I could move the pencil back over to that area and now you can see I've got a little bit more dark. So we're modifying, we're refining our qualification with the 
once again, you can go to Freshman um, Zealot, turn it off for Zoom for this particular show. And now we're going to leave this for today. You can find the time for some of these that are going to go away next week. And there we go. So, once you've cracked that, um, let's go back to the starting point where we started from. And we're going to go to the goal as well. We're going to start with that one. So just for the sake of this tutorial, I'll just make it the first one for this month. Keeping in mind, though, that if your subject is like sports or maths or science, that's usually when you crack it the most. But don't carry this on like that. You usually need to do your own specific thing for that. So, for example, at the end here, the cracker would most likely stuff up and need a little bit of help. So what you would do is you go to that end frame just before he walks off, and you need to double-click on the layer that you want to cracker in at number 4. Go down to number four, and now there's auto cancel again. Just move the mark slightly, and the keyframe should pop up down here. And then just scrub through the timeline until he walks off the hill, and just drag your mark manually. So if you scrub through this now, you'll notice the mark is animated as soon as he turns off. And then if you go to the middle and just find it a little bit. most of the time, but in problem scenarios like that, you just need to manually uh, auto cancel in and yeah, you can do that. So now that we have our air crack and our skin crack squared up for the year, let's jump straight on to the next one. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the time curve. So I'm just going to zoom in here and once again, I'm just going to create the mark straight away and just keep that going to show us two more going to use a polar height to tell that story. So once we've done that, we could just go straight to your cracking and start to crack it this way. So it should do pretty well. Start by contrast. It should be uh, the subject should be fine sticking on that logo. It seems to be doing a pretty good job. And once we check in, we're just going to add a polar height to that again. So I'll just scrub back here until I find the end frame where the guy walks over. And now I'm going to go to the qualifier window, click the magic wand, and just click on number 5 there. And just click around until it grabs most of what you're looking for. And then we may need to go in and refine that a little bit. And then we could just go into our mark and change it to number 4. With that cracking data there, we maintain that that particular mark is not there. So let's right click change layer to polar tile and then we'll click this layer and just change that to number one. And now you can see that I can increase the brightness of his eyes and add in the depth selection there. Click the zoom in there. And if I press control D, I can refine that and see what we're doing there. So obviously it didn't do a very good job, but you get the idea. Now the beauty is that all of these selections in the four little boxes are all um, Based off the original Blender image, so they all have all data to be able to pass on and print on. Now, this parallel mode here is isn't very useful for us in this particular example, but it's absolutely necessary for the idea. So that's the uh, balance mode on the left, uh, parallel mode on the right. And now, before we go any further, we need to add another mark. So now we have our group of selections. There's one more selection I need to create, and that is the skirt. Just because I feel like the skirt is a little bit lacking, it looks a little bit grey or blue, and I really want to make it white and clean. So I'm going to create one more selection. So if we just double click on the file, and we go node, then add parallel screen, and we'll add that as our node. Right click on that and just call it skirt. And double click on that node, go to our qualifier, click on the magic wand, change color, and just click on skirt. Now straight away you can tell it's got a really good job there. I'm just going to increase the highlight room. And just turn the hue off just to see what happens. Now what I'm going to do is actually draw a mask around the skirt. But in some instances, um, it's, this is why it's handy to understand this three question system. What color, etc. and what drive. Because when you're making a selection, sometimes you actually don't want to include color information. For example, this shirt is mostly linen. And I need to get a clean hue 
and then drag the arrow spoon off the pin, and now you can see how it's selected the edge of that glass display. I'm going to click move now on selecting all um, variations of saturation and luminance, which is our internal display thread. So what are we going to do with that? Well, I'm just going to do a mask on that, and that should help us with the texture. But I am going to just increase the highlighting all the way to the top. So then I'll just go to our mask, and I'm going to use Bezier tool this time and just draw a mask. things like this is really what brings um, you know color correction to life it's what what don't you like about this stuff that's the first thing I do I look at it how can I balance am I doing it with the skin doesn't look so good the hair could be different the, the watch feels not crisp enough the eyes aren't bright enough so if you look at things like that think about what you want to change um, it's just awesome to be able to actually go ahead and do that and it's really rewarding when you get the result that you hope for so hopefully this tutorial has been helpful in that so there I've analyzed forward. I'm just going to quickly analyze back as well. And all right, so that's what we're going to do. Let's just go back to our sketch and just drag that in. And um, yep, so now we have the shirt style thread and it's finished. So let's just quickly go over that too. I'm just going to warp it so that I can see it better. So we actually haven't done anything to this uh, balanced display, although we are very close to it. What we're going to do now is uh, I'm actually not going to change Check out there, I've explained curves about a million times, but I'm just going to create an edge curve right now so I can drop the shadows a little bit and raise the highlights a little bit. Let's see, we have a pretty nice looking contrast. I'll just press Control D to turn that highlight up. And while we're at this contrast, I might just rename it and call it Color Mirror. Yeah, Color Contrast. So it's both. And uh, what I could also do is increase saturation. So now the saturation's increased, the contrast has increased. I'll just do uh, Control D to switch to that mode. And it's just switched back there. We actually haven't changed any of these components yet. All I've done is balanced it so I can actually add in some contrast to the shirt. So it's starting to look a lot better. But let's compare it to the uh, final shot. There's definitely a lot more color in the glass. The eyes are more pronounced. The skin looks better. Uh, you know, the few things we still need to go with. But the thing is, most of the hard work's done, and the rest is just fun tweaking. So the color contrast is much better. But now we're going to go back to the skin, and we can tweak in a little bit of warmth and light. Any of our highlights and mids can really create the look we want. And this shot here, I'm just going to add a little bit more yellow to the hair, make sure it's just not too long. And with the eyes, I'm just going to increase the luminance of the eyes with the highlight. the actual white to the eyes has gone blue. So remember white being highlights, I would use the James highlight, the highlights highlight that flips the arrows and just balance out the blue. Because remember the opposite. So now the white to the eyes are looking good. Let's just drop that back down to just some more blue in there. Try not to go too bright. Jump down to the shirt, and I'm just going to increase. 
think the burning of the city in the three three of the six houses
the point of just understanding nodes and towers and that, but also understanding these simple tools and how they can really, you know, give you a lot of flexibility and freedom with color, you're going to really start enjoying it. And it's actually a really empowering process to learn and process, um, especially since, you know, a lot of cameras going raw these days, if you don't understand how to get the most out of the image in post, you're going to fall behind. So not only is it good um, to stay in ahead of the game, but like I said, it's also very rewarding. So check out my blog, um, be friends with me on Facebook, and uh, yeah, there'll be more tutorials to come. Thanks for listening. My name's Matt Scott, and I'll see you next time. And while you're on Facebook adding me, um, <laughs> why not type in Whiskey Boy, and uh, in brackets, of course, my name, and check out some of the work that Cameron McCulloch's done. He's a writer, director, and a good friend of mine who is the man behind the film. So go and check out their page. Um, like it if you like it. I think it's jumping around festivals as we speak. But uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun to shoot, so it'd be great to get your support. Indie filmmakers, unite now. And what the hell, while you're on Facebook, type the ninja for me. And uh, check out the film I'm shooting right now. And we're, I think we're eight days into principal photography. It's a 33-day shoot, feature film about ninjas. Who the hell doesn't like ninjas? If you don't like ninjas, you're probably a samurai or something like that. But anyway, I'm having an absolute blast shooting this film. And um, yeah, back to work tomorrow. I've had three days off. It's been freaking awesome. I've been in like mud trenches with guns and shit and um, explosions. God bless my arm. Anyway, I gotta go. Thanks, guys. Peace out.